Hi, I'm Sophie Park and I'm a cognitive hypnotherapist. I, like many of you, are currently at home social distancing with my daughter and husband. And it's been a you know funny few weeks since our life as we knew it changed with lockdown. And like some of you, I found it increasingly challenging. So I'm here to talk to you about how you can make it through these next few weeks and months and harness your inner strength during the current pandemic so that you can feel strong enough to deal with whatever comes up as it continues. First thing I want to acknowledge is it's a funny old situation we find ourselves in. There is no blueprint for how we should be acting or what we should be doing beyond following the government guidelines around social distancing. It all feels really uncertain as the world as we know it's constantly changing. Over the last few weeks you would have had experienced a multitude of ups and as well as downs. As a parent these may have included worries about childcare, how am I going to work at home with my children, um, pressures around homeschooling, you know, how am I going to get all the work done, to worries about financial uncertainty, you know, am I going to have a job at the end of this? And this isn't even accounting for the normal challenges we face as parents on a daily basis. This is parenting to, you know, to the nth power. It's already hard work and even harder now for the world the way things are. One thing I like to say is it's okay to acknowledge it's hard because, because it is. <laughs> Saying it's hard, sometimes painfully difficult, is not a failing. It's hard work being a parent and even harder if you're flying solo and you don't have another person to default to when you just need a time out. And, you know, we can't ignore the emotional impact um, of social distancing and the lack of, you know, face to face human connection and not having our usual network around us is having on our mental well-being. So, you know, go easy on yourself. Many of the challenges you will have experienced and will continue to experience will have come and will become obstacles um, which you will overcome and, you know, and win and you'll lose some. Um, but that's fine because you can't win them all. So, you know, pick your battles. And for all the victories, I would encourage you to celebrate each and every one. One thing I am so certain of is that you are doing better than you think you are. OK, maybe like me, you haven't had your A game on as a parent each and every day uh, and been following the curriculum or early years framework and that's perfectly fine you're not a teacher or early years specialist also i want you to remember that doing something more than nothing is absolutely better than doing nothing at all even if you're doing the bare minimum when it comes to schooling or activities of your children it's absolutely fine it's something so don't beat yourself up about it it's a disorienting and strange time and it will seem like every day things are changing because they are. Something I remind myself and tell my clients is that even in the craziness of whatever happens in the world, the one constant in all of this is you, you know, that's the one thing you have control over, you know, how you respond to the world, how you react to what's happening and how you can consciously guide your thoughts and feelings. That means you can be there for yourself and be there for your family. We all have this inner strength. It's our hidden superpower and I want you today to commit to tuning into this strength because it's what's going to get you through this. So how do you get in touch with your inner power and, and harness it? Firstly, it starts with, with you, knowing who you are, what makes you tick. For example, do you know what your signature strengths are? We all carry a unique set of signature strengths and signature strengths refer to those character strengths that make up our personality. They include things like, um, like curiosity, creativity and justice. Research has shown that if you feed your signature strengths, the happier you are because you're giving meaning to your life and you can create a feeling of flow, that feeling when you're in the zone and totally absorbed in something. Pure joy. If you want to find out what your signature strengths are, there is a great website uh, which includes tips on how to feed them and it's a free resource um, and you can, you can find uh, the signature strengths questionnaire at um, fearcharacter.org. Um, but of course, we have to acknowledge that building resilience and in strength isn't just about kind of putting in the hours and work and time. Sometimes the best work is done when you choose to slow down and just pause, whether it's listening to a meditation app, following an online yoga class, or just listening to some music, I would really encourage you to make time in your day away from your children and distractions, even if it's for 15 or 20 minutes. And I try to do this before I go to bed because that's when my daughter's asleep. And if meditation is not your bag, you could try 478 breathing, a mindful and relaxing breath technique, which involves you focusing on taking a long, deep breath in and out. To do 478 breathing, First, find a comfortable seated position, and what you do is place the tip of your tongue 
on your gums right behind the top front teeth so this area here and you keep your tongue here the whole time you're breathing in so you start four seven eight breathing by first breathing in quietly through the nose for four seconds and you hold the breath for a count of seven seconds and you blow out through your mouth like this with your lips slightly pursed together making whooshing sound and you for eight seconds and you repeat the cycle four times and I encourage you to practice twice a day to really see the benefits and also it's a great practice if you're having trouble falling asleep third thing you can introduce in your day is a gratitude practice in positive psychology research um, practicing gratitude has shown to help people feel more positive emotions but also contribute to overall health and well-being Practicing gratitude, whether that's writing a list of three things that you're grateful for or keeping a journal will help train your mind to search for positives on an unconscious level in terms of how you perceive your life and what's happening in the world. It's something I've been doing with my NCT friends where we text each other three things we're grateful for every day. Giving thanks is also great practice for children. A twist on the gratitude practice is an exercise I learned last year from the psychologist Maria Sira. It's to ask yourself, what was the highlight of your day? It's a brilliant practice to do at the dinner table before bedtime with children as it helps to focus the mind on searching for positive response and it opens up a conversation which is, can only be a good thing when most things are only happening inside the home. Also for me, it's helping to serve as a reminder of the small and unexpected things in life that can bring joy. And my final piece of advice is to take every day as it comes. Resist the temptation to think too far ahead Focus on getting through the day and just be kind to yourself. This is a really unusual situation, so cut yourself some flag. Give yourself the same compassion you give to people you love, you give to your children, and lower your expectations. It's okay if you haven't been doing Joe Wicks every day like the rest of the world, baked banana bread or the washing laundry hasn't been done. That is not a measure of your worth. Being there for yourself and your loved ones is what matters and what everyone and your children will remember. How you made them feel happy and secure because you were and are. Don't be too hard on yourself. You've got this. I'd love to hear how you get on. So please feel free to find me on Instagram at The Inner Practice.